what would become known after the fact as the game of the century. It could be said that this is the day America discovered Columbus. Fans of both Notre Dame and Ohio State had been working to get tickets for three years since the game was first announced. 81,018 were lucky enough to make their way into Ohio Stadium, while another estimated 8 million listened on radio, and no one would be disappointed in the action or drama. Things started poorly for the Irish. The head coach's younger brother, halfback Mike Layden, hurried a pass under pressure and was intercepted by Ohio State's Frank Antonucci. He would lateral to Frank Bauscher, who took care of the rest, racing 68 yards for a touchdown that would put the Ohio State faithful in pandemonium. The Ohio State offense had been averaging 50 points per game and dazzling opponents with its lateral happy offense that included 100 different plays. Jumpin' Joe Williams would take it in from three yards out and Ohio State's lead would quickly climb to 13 to nothing. But it wouldn't be long before everyone would soon hear of Andy Pilney. A scoreless third quarter ended with Pilney returning a punt to the Ohio State 12-yard line a play which seemed to ignite the Irish. As they moved to the fourth quarter, Pilney would hit Frank Gall with a pass that got the team to the two-yard line. From there, Steve Miller made his way to the end zone and the Irish were on the board. But Ken Stilley's extra point try hit the crossbar, changing the dynamic of the rest of the quarter as Notre Dame trailed 13-6. Ohio State's powerful offense had been stymied much of the second half, but when Williams broke loose, it was Pilney who made a touchdown saving tackle. The Buckeyes would later punt, allowing Pilney to go back to work. He found fullback Wally Fromert with a few dump passes over the middle, one going for 39 yards. Then, Pilney would hit Layden with a 15-yard touchdown pass that put the Irish in position to tie. New kicker, same result, as Fromert missed the point after and the Irish still trailed 13 to 12. All Ohio State had to do was run out the clock, but that meant running past Pilney, who hit Dick Belts on the Buckeyes' first play, and Belts fumbled for the first time all season, and Notre Dame got the ball near midfield with a minute to play. Pilney would take the ball and race 32 yards, breaking tackles in a spectacular run that would not only end at the Ohio State 19, but end Pilney's playing career. Torn ligaments in his left knee brought Pilney out and Bill Shakespeare back in. But the drama was far from over. Fifth string quarterback Jim McKenna was sent in for the only play of his Notre Dame career to tell Shakespeare the play was 37 and 37 would become six for the Irish as Shakespeare finds Wayne Milner for a 19-yard touchdown that wins the game. Ohio State's powerful offense was held to an all-time low of two net yards for the second half, but the day belonged to backup halfback Andy Pilney, a 5'11", 175-pound senior from Dillonvale, Ohio. In the fourth quarter alone, he ran and passed the Irish to three touchdowns two in the final three minutes. Despite missing the game winner, Pilney delivered what Hall of Fame sports writer Grantland Rice called the single greatest performance he had ever seen.